I think there's something of a false equivalence going on between what's in Harry's book Spare and whether Jeremy Clarkson was right to be called out and deserves to lose one of his many platforms. Mm. I think the broader issue is, and I think where Meghan is a very useful prison to inform us about identity debates in the UK today, is would we have even noticed what he'd written in his article about a woman being paraded naked down the street, mm. inciting violence, talking about his cellular hatred? Would we have noticed what he said if he hadn't pinned it on Meghan? And so, so, and that is, I think, is a valuable point on a day when 800 Met police officers are being investigated for sexual abuse and domestic violence. On a day, the day after, in mm. fact, that the Metropolitan Police has been accused of institutionalised misogyny. We need to look at the coarsening of our public debate around women and gender, which, by the way, isn't protected by law. I agree with the fact that we have got a coarsening, actually, of, um, and I think particularly for teenagers and the porn online. That, but for me, that's... That's not this. So the, uh, what I love about Jeremy Clarkson's writing, and I, I could take him or leave him as a presenter before the Farm series, because I think the Farm series is amazing. It's one of the few programmes on TV that my children will watch with me of all ages. It's hilarious. He's a brilliant writer, and his writing style is... It is surreal, it is scatological, it is hyperbolic. That's his point. I mean, just to take some other uh, lines from his article, he says, it seems that she has an arm so far up his bottom she can use her fingers to alter his facial expressions. Uh, he goes on to say, um, one day, uh, I can tell you with absolute certainty what's coming next. Harold's, books, Harold's spare book will be released. Then she'll do one called I Think I May Be God. And then she'll be exa she'll exhausted the whole royal thing. So she'll be off. And it, it, it's a funny, ridiculous article that this one section's been taken from. In his equivocal apology, which wasn't really an apology, because he said to them on an email only addressed to the Duke of Sussex, given he's meant to be apologising about hatred towards women, specifically Meghan, you'd have thought he might have cc'd her into the mail. And by the way, sending somebody an apology on Christmas Day, <laughs> I thought that that was talk about a gift in the form of a turd in some respects. But, <laughs> That's but, the kind of joke he'd like. <laughs> he would. Now, I, I'm not questioning his ability to entertain. But he said in this equivocal apology, in the same breath as saying, you baffle me, I, I don't approve of the mission you're on against the royal family. But hey, here's my apology anyway. I mean, that's a bit like me saying, Bev, look, love, I don't like your face, but I'm sorry I punched it. So it didn't really wash as an apology. But beyond that, he also admitted that mm, it's going to be really hard to be interesting and vigilant going forward in my articles. So do we want to encourage right. that? But do we want to encourage effectively what he's admitting to be misinformation? Because if you're vigilant, you're careful and therefore you're accurate. And I worry that we give these men, and they are generally men, giant platforms. But if and you look at some of the writers, if you look at, say, Catelyn Moran, if you look at some of the really good female columnists, Janice Turner even, you know, there are often funny, yeah. um, insightful punchy, satirical pieces that are wonderful to read. And I hate the idea that he's going to be castrated in his writing. Let's not castrate Jeremy Clarkson, Tessa. Bev, let me give you a really good piece <laughs> of news from your point of view. He ain't lost his Murdoch platform. And, you know, all the, oh, the grand tour is going to be rescinded. Not till 2024. Yeah. Surely by then he can be pensioned off. Well, let's it. go down. And he's also got a platform on ITV. The guy ain't short of platforms. But I think to suggest that we must immediately accept the equivocal apology when this is a man who sinned before. Remember Sandwich Gate? Yes, but yeah. then that's OK. Like People do stupid things, but it doesn't mean... I just I can't bear the cancel culture. I can't bear the fact that Meghan and Harry feel they have a right to try to undermine, undermine the way that he has written... He has, he has earned a living for years, a decade, as a really But they're speaking funny to their writer. audience and he's speaking to his and his tend to be your age and my age or older. Mm. They tend to be white, they tend to be British. They are talking to a very different audience. And he says that in his article, doesn't he? He says about the fact that everybody his age can't bear. He says, uh, I hate Meghan, not like I hate Nicola Sturgeon or Rose West. I hate her, I hate her on a cellular level. And he's deliberately chosen people, which is, it does have an intake of breath, but that is where the comedy lies, right? Yeah, but and, I didn't find that funny because it was so sexist. Well, and I also thought the way that he posited, oh, this was so careless, I didn't get somebody to check my article. You are 62, mate. You admit yourself that you've written 5,000 articles. I mean, I don't having a filter behind me checking what I'm saying to you right now, yeah. Bev. But actually, he put in loads of thought because he made sure that it was th that her gender he attacked, not her race. Don't he sided her alongside other white women, please note. 